Welcome back. In this video, I'll be adding HTML templates to this application. Templates allow us to render data into our HTML and implement some basic logic without having to do a bunch of string concatenation. They also sanitize the HTML to protect us from cross-site scripting, which is good because we're pulling this data from other sources and rendering it on our own page. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is open up my routes and figure out which ones I need to define a template for. There's actually only two of these that need a template, and they're the get requests, specifically the index get handler and the sources get handler. The read get handler doesn't need a template because all it does is redirect to the article once it flags the article as being read. OK, so just two handlers. Only two templates we'll need to write. The first thing I'm going to do is whoop, import this render template method from Flask. And instead of returning this string that we created here just for testing, now I'm going to return a call to that render template method. And I'm going to pass in the first parameter to the function is the template name. And in this case, it's going to be called index.html. So we'll need to define this template later, but that's going to be the name that I'll define it with. And then templates allow you to pass in some data in the form of keyword arguments. So the data that I want to pass in here is this articles list. I want to assign it to a keyword in the template called articles. So now I can create a folder for all the templates to live in called templates and then create that index.html template that I'm referencing here. And I guess I'll just go ahead and type this out. I'll give it the title latest news. And then I'll define a body. I want all of the HTML really to go into this main element, uh, mostly for styling purposes. And then inside main, I'll go ahead and create a header. Uh, again, it'll just say latest news. So that'll be at the top of our page here. And now I can actually iterate over that article list that we just passed to this template. So the template language that's used by default in Flask is called Jinja. And Jinja is pretty simple. If you want to do iteration, it started with this left squiggly bracket and a percent sign. And then you do kind of like a normal Python for loop. So I'd say for article in articles. And then you want to end this little template tag. So now, well, I'll go ahead and end the for loop immediately afterwards. So everything that's put into here will be rendered into our HTML for each one of these articles. So I'm actually going to create an article element inside. So each article is going to be represented by this element. This element's going to go into place right here in the HTML for every single article. And they're all going to have a little header which is going to have a link to Okay, so the link is going to be to read slash and then this is the notation that's used to inject some data into the template. So this this double squiggly bracket opening means that this 
value is actually going to be placed into the template right here. So the article ID is going to be put into this, this path. Which of course means this link, when they click on it, is going to take them to the read handler right here for that article ID, which is going to flag it as being read, and then it's going to redirect them to the link. And we want them to have some text to click on. So again, I'm doing some injection here. to pull out the title. So they're going to see the title and it's going to be a link that takes them to the read handler. So this looks good for now. Um, obviously we don't have the summary. It would be nice to say when it was published or maybe even to list what source it came from. But I want to test this really quick as is. Because right now we're just going to have a list of titles that are links to read the article. So let's see if that works. Do python3 run.py and open up the browser. If we go here, there we go. So we have the title, bleh, the title of each article, and there are links that take us to the read address. So if I click on one, let's say I click on this one, it redirected us to that article. Now if I reload this page, it's gone because the read method just changed it to being read. It changed the unread flag in the database. So now I can go back to the editor and just start filling in some of the other data that we're going to want in this this little feed stream. Uh, the first thing I want to add is the source of the feed. Because I'd like to know for every article that I'm seeing in the news feed, which source did it come from? So create this div called source and it's going to say from and then I'm going to make a link because I'd also like to be able to just click on that source and go straight to their site. So now we get article dot source dot link. And the text inside the link is going to be article.source.title. So what's going on here? Well, we know that we're injecting some data into this href for the link. And that data is article.source.link. Now if we go back to our model, The uh, the article has this relationship to the source table. It's based on the source ID, but SQL Alchemy allows us to access it as though the source were just a property of our article. So we can directly look up that uh, the source class for the article using this property, which is really convenient. And once we have the source, we know that it has a link to the, the source website, and it has a title. So that's all we're doing here. We're grabbing the link from the source, and we're grabbing the title and using that as the text for the link. Then I also want to have it say, when it was added. So I'm going to make another div. I'm giving it the class added. Again, these classes are just for styling purposes. So later on, using CSS, we can go back and like 
make it not look as generic as it's going to look for now. Uh, so then from the article, we can get that date added property. And then the last thing we need is the body, which likewise is just article.body. Cool. So now we have these little self-contained articles that have all the properties we should need to assess our newsfeed and decide, you know, which stories we want to click on and read. So let's go back to the terminal, give everything a restart, then go back to the browser and refresh the page. There we go. So we see the article title, we see where it comes from, and we see when it was added. We can go back and format the state if you'd like it to be in a different format, but for now, this works for me. Um, and then we see the uh, summary, the body of the, the article. So now on our feed reader, we can go through and check out these summaries and decide which one we want to click on and read. Cool, so it looks like it's working. Um, now we can move on to that other template we needed to define which, let me go back to the routes, was here, the sources get request handler. So I'm going to do basically the same thing that I did up there and call this render template method. This time it's going to be the sources.html template. And this time we're passing it this keyword argument, which is going to be that sources list from our query. And when we define this template, we're going to put a form that submits a post request to this handler. So it's going to need to pass this feed value to it. It's a good point to keep in mind. So now I'm going to go into templates and create this sources.html file. And again, just some basic I'll just call this page sources. So I'll start with the form. Um, the method of the form is post. We're making a post request. And we're going to have an input field in it that's named feed so that we can plug in that feed URL to add a new feed. And it's generally a good idea to add a submit button to these things. You actually don't need it. You can hit enter in that input field, but I feel like people are more comfortable when there's a submit button next to it because it makes the intention a bit more clear. So now I'm going to iterate over those sources that were passed into here. So these are going to be sources that are already added to the database. So again, the Jinja template format just has you do this opening bracket. And then you say for source in sources, because we pass that in. Um, and go ahead and end this for loop right here. So for each one of these, we're just going to create a div. And all that div is going to contain is this little a element. <laughs> Not h elf, <laughs> href equals source.link So we're getting a link to the source which is the the web page that the source comes from and the text for this link is just going to be source.title So if 
I did everything correctly, I should be able to go to the terminal and give this a good restart. Jump on over to the browser and go to sources. Cool, so it does list the source that we have added and it has this form up here so we can add a new source. I'm going to take the URL for this feed from Wired. It's their uh, science, the latest science news from Wired. And I'm going to see if we can add this. There we go. We have this science latest. All right. If I click on it, uh, it says page not found, but I think that's an error on their behalf. For some reason, the link that they give in their feed doesn't actually work. The NASA one works. Yeah, cool. So we've got our templates all set up and working. In the next video, I'll be adding some CSS to this project so we can style it and make it look less generic. Bye.